Good evening, I'm Jenny Malik. And I'm James Malik, and we are so pleased to receive the Skip Weiler Inspiration Award. Before I was diagnosed, um, I was working a boring job, <laughs> but I was leading a normal life until we got the news. <laughs> We knew something was wrong because her stomach started hurting and she was having a lot of swelling in her abdomen. So we um, went to see her doctor and the doctor thought initially it was just a stomach muscle. She was doing Zumba at the time and they thought maybe she turned wrong or did something. So that's where it started. And uh, they gave her some, was it pain pills and said, you know, if it gets worse, let us know. <laughs> Fast forward two weeks, and it did get worse. She, she swelled, was in a lot of pain, and they're like, go to the ER. My stomach was so bloated because it was filled with infection. They put in a drain tube and said, hey, in a few months, we'll wait for the swelling to go down. Then we'll do a laparoscopic appendectomy. That's when mm -hmm. they discovered in surgery that the infection was hiding a large tumor. It didn't show up on the CAT scans because the infection was hiding it. I would say, well, to help you out, Okay, yeah. initially I think we were just on autopilot listening to the doctors and kind of following what the set paths were. Hearing that you have cancer is just a mental blow. When I was first told it was cancer and I had this huge surgery, I thought, okay, well, the surgeon sounds confident that he got it all, so I should be okay, right? And it wasn't six months later and we found out that it had come back already. Until then, I didn't really, I guess, think about my mental health regarding the diagnosis so much. But yeah, it was more autopilot. It was more yeah. autopilot. And then once we <clears throat> heard the words, it has come back, I think that's when my mental health started to fray. We were thrown at all different kinds of doctors, being told I had to make all these kinds of decisions, surgery, chemo, radiation, radiation, and nobody was really specialist in my kind of cancer because it's so rare. I still struggle with it mentally now, and it's been seven years. Well, total as of right now, I've had four major abdominal operations. I found the cancer support community online um, I realized after the second high pack that I couldn't handle my recurrence and my cancer on my own. And I said, there has to be something here locally that could help me. And I found them, I met up with Angie and she may not realize this, but she changed my life. She gave me so much good advice things that I would have never even thought to ask the surgeons. She told me, hey, you do have some power left. You can make better decisions, educated decisions. You can still have a good life. You know, it just depends on your outlook. Finding the cancer support community is essential. Um, luckily, they have cancer support communities at different states, but we're so lucky that we have one here in the middle of Ohio, so we can attend the meetings in person. It, I love going every month. <laughs> it's really helped us both.